What's up, party people? I am Tia the Astro Poet. Uh, we're gonna do a little uh, three card pick a deck reading. Um, if you're not familiar with pick a deck readings, real quick, basically there's gonna be three decks. Um, there's this one, uh, this oracle card from the Queen of the Moon deck. I've got this card from the Black Moon, is that what you call it? Yeah, Black Moon Astrology cards. Uh, and this moon from, or this moon, sure, they're all moons. Um, and this card from the Enchanted. Enchanted map. I guess I could have memorized all that before I got on, but <laughs> uh, So these are the three we've got number one number two and number three and you're just gonna kind of go with your gut here This is a really good exercise if you're growing your intuition um, To pick the one that you feel you're the most led to and then to go ahead and just like run with that Listen to a little bit of it see if it resonates and if not maybe ask yourself like okay Was I really listening to my intuition there like I've definitely done one where I've like I had a gut feeling towards one that I was like, but that's a prettier card. <laughs> and then I started on the pretty card reading and I was like, yeah, no, this doesn't resonate, you know? So you, you build your trust in this, but there's no right or wrong. You're just going to pick the one you resonate with uh, the most. Again, this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Um, so you guys can go ahead and look down in the description for the timestamps for each one if you want. Um, or we're going to jump right into card one. All right, so this one card one from, let's see, sorry, my ring light is glaring on that, but it's fine because you're not really going to see the rest of the cards anyways, it doesn't matter, but um, it's number 42, uh, it's titled The Lunar God, The Masculine. Um, so the very first thing when I pull this card, I kind of get the sense you guys are, I feel like this is internal, um, you know, because this card when it comes up indicates that there's some healing going on either external internal meaning like maybe there's if it's external some external masculine energy um that's possibly pulling some fuck shit that y'all need to deal with but um the immediate sense i get with this is that it's very internal so what we're dealing with um particularly with you all um is particular healing of your inner masculine um you know, this is funny because I'm, I'm going through this process myself. I've got a little like affirmation over here on my window. It says, um, or my window mirror, um, it says I'm decisive. I'm stable. I see clearly. I know what to do and I take action. And that's inner divine masculine energy, you know, um, those affirmations, you know, it's why I'm here, um, why I'm able to do this and why I took action to actually you know, start this channel. It's the thing in you that just does. It's the action. It's the moving. It's the going. It's the doing. Um, and so, ooh, can't go through all that. Here we go. Mm, I'm going to go with that one. Okay. So we've also got the hermit card here. So whatever y'all are going on, this is definitely internal. Is it you're not doing that you want to do what the fuck is it that you want to do just god damn it do it do it yeah okay so yeah these are my like my creatives these are my <laughs> i get the sense if you pick this deck you probably you're are you're either already on some form of creative endeavor and you're at this like vulnerable kind of afraid place where you're like me like to take another step makes me feel really vulnerable to take another step is really uncomfortable to take another step is like that scary thing that I've been putting off doing um and you guys are at this place where you're just like okay do I kind of abandon ship or do I like keep going and face that scary thing and do that scary thing okay or you're in this place where you're wondering if you should begin the scary thing all right, so you've got like two different groups, but either way, I get the sense you guys are like super creative and you've got some, you've got some sort of idea that you feel very, um, you feel a lot more immature in your creativity than you actually are. You actually are a much more progressed, so like in your ability to perform, like for this thing that you want to do. Um, it's like, you are, um, I don't you're like disqualifying yourself before even starting the race you know you're just like oh no i could never even finish that you know race when it's like well a of all how do you know because you've never tried uh b of all this is a different race than you've run before 
So again, you've never tried it. And it's like, you've done other races and yeah, maybe you face planted, but like you probably learned something from it. Or maybe you met a new friend who helped pick you the fuck up. Or maybe, you know, that led you to run a different race that you were a little bit better at. Um, you know, and, and, and now you're looking at this new race and instead of just giving it a shot, you're just completely disqualifying yourself from the get go. Um, not even really trying not believing in yourself like you've got this star quality you've got whatever it is in you that um is needed to do this task and to do it well um and your work will pay off new moon and capricorn your work's paying off like you it could like that's this is like a potential outcome you know what i'm saying depending on whether or not you actually fucking take the opportunity and try um I get the sense that this internal masculine energy, I mean, this is always how it works, right? But these energies work in different ways. And there's someone in particular in your recent past who like didn't believe in you and you've basically internalized their voice. So there, the, and this comes up a lot in my readings, there's these inner critics and it's like the way that I describe it is it's like that person's voice becomes your inner voice of judgment. That person's voice becomes this thing that you constantly hear. And it's this almost like soul tie with this person who formerly just completely didn't believe in you and um, did, didn't want you to shine. And so you've you've just internalized that energy. You've internalized those thought forms, those patterns. And... You've basically taken it on as your own, um, because I see you. I see you younger. I see you as a child as very um, reckless. I see you as a child as very much like balls to the wall, like move forward, go go go. Like I'm gonna try this, you know, kind of just take all these leaps of faith, you know, and you know that was that. That energy, that childlikeness, um, you know, is something that you let go of at some point. Which, listen, this is valid. This shit comes up a lot for a lot of us where, you know, we used to be some type of way. And then there's, this is what the healing of the masculine is. It's recognizing, okay, you know, this was the age that I met that person who stopped believing in me. This is the age where I felt that my autonomy was taken. This is the age where, um, you know... Some shit went down and just going back into those times going back into those memories going back into those places and just being really real with those energies letting them move through your body feeling them out and getting the fuck rid of them because this is not your voice this is not like your purest your your you in alignment this is all of these voices from all along the way that have just taken root taken root taken root taken root and it's like growing this tree that's completely inorganic to your actual internal system this isn't really it's like as you're doing things as you're thinking through things like your spirit you aren't really like running the thoughts the thoughts are you know rather than being you and coming from your own inner well these thoughts are sort of invasions from these traumas from these pain moments from these abandonments and and those are the voices that are running the show right now which is a real shame because you have so much creativity to offer you have um like i get the sense that you maybe are in a position of like really needing something like financially and you're trying to do it in a very earthy way like you're trying to just be like okay i'll just whatever nine to five get this job what the fuck ever you know and if that's what you go to do do it um but you also could maybe on the side or in addition or instead do something hyper creative that would actually manifest quite a bit for you um if you would just believe in yourself <laughs> like you have this manifestation like through your creativity like you know but you're overthinking it you're overthinking you're stuck in your head you've got that masculine you know, toxic masculine voice inside of you. Um, yeah, that's blocking your abundance. It's blocking Queen of Pentacles here. 
but that is ready to burst out of you this queen of pentacles this ability like to rule and reign to be creative to make for yourself the life that you want to mother yourself kindly while you're doing these manifestations to rest when you need to rest Like, you've done so much hard work already. There's, like, I, you have a lot of, it, I keep going back to, like, you have experience you feel you don't have. Like, you actually have practical, tangible, real-life things that you've done. It's like, how would I put it? It's almost like someone who wants to be an event planner, okay? They're like, I want to be an event planner, but I can't be an event planner because I've never been an event planner. But it's like, but you were a bartender that threw a lot of events, and like you were the point of contact for like all of the people who did the event planning. Like you worked in a venue, you know, like. He... And so you were, you, you've been really tangential to the things that you want to do. And your spirit was actually really wise to do that, excuse me, to give you the experience that it knew that you would want down the road to do something of your own. So you have tangential experience that like if you were to work with a recruiter you know which i used to be which is why i can pinpoint this stuff it's like you you don't actually realize what that would look like on a resume either literally or like metaphorically speaking like you don't recognize the skills that you have under your belt you don't recognize how much you really bring to the table with what you want to do and so you're selling yourself short you're overthinking you're not believing in yourself until now. Until now. Until now. So fucking believe in yourself, dude. Um, Yeah, you, and you're starting to. This is what's happening. You're starting to believe in yourself. You're silencing that critical voice. You're absolutely silencing that critical voice. You're recognizing it not as your own. You're doing the inner healing that you need to do in order to let go of and release and forgive that person, that energy, that whatever that was that came into your life, that pattern, that religion. For some of you, it was a whole ass mindset that just like pummeled you for ages and you're healing from it. And what's happening is that maybe it's louder now than ever because it's the last like remnants of it that's like being like yanked up, you know? For some of you, this is just going to take being alone a little bit more. For some of you, you're trying to like heal through other people. You're trying to heal through these relationships. You're trying to heal through these friendships when your spirit's been asking you to spend some time alone. Your spirit's been asking you like just get in the bathtub and cry this out. Just go on a walk by yourself and feel this out. Um, just meditate in your bedroom alone. Um, if you can't get into a bedroom alone or if you share a bedroom, just spend a long ass time in the bathroom. Tell somebody you're stopped up and just take the time in there to do what the fuck you need to do and like cry it the fuck out. And some of you have been, you, you know, and you're avoiding being alone because you know that once you're alone, you don't have that external simulation of all these people around you, then that's really when you're going to have to like really deal with this and you're avoiding that. And that's real. Okay, I'm not casting stones here. I'm just putting out these energies and saying you actually are a lot stronger than you think. You can handle this. You can process this. And not only that, but I get the sense that what you're thinking is going to take a really long time is going to be so fast. Like, you've got this energy moving through you really quickly. This emotional, like, fire that needs to burn through you is, like, whoosh. Like, it's just, it's really, like, ready. This energy is really ready. Like, this critical voice is, it's, like, time to really get this out. And so all these energies are, like, really on your behalf, like, in the same way, like, flowing with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've got, like, you've got this. This is not going to be, it's, like, you've already done a lot of inner healing things. I get the sense you're probably like you would consider yourself pretty spiritual already somehow and or at least you've been 
on some very intentional, like obviously our spiritual path has no beginning and end because as our spirits, we're nothing, we're eternal, shapeless, we're all um, But in this incarnation, you know what I'm saying? Like you've been really like gung-ho, like you've been like beating down doors, <laughs> jumping off heads. <laughs> trying everything you can do you're like i just gotta just just gotta do something i just gotta change this you know and you know you're absolutely right to see it as something that is ready to leave your body but what's what's holding you back is actually the resistance to it and the judgment of it because it's nothing but information. And the reality is, if that came into your life at that point in time, guess what? There was some form of vibrational match there, okay? And that's like the shit reality none of us really want to say, but I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. You know, what was it about you in you that accepted that? What was it in you that allowed that? You know, how can you allow that to just be what it is? You know, maybe these like, Maybe some exercises in allowance. Maybe some releasing of judgment. Maybe some releasing of control. Because your inner masculine has been so criticized. It's like that's why you're so afraid to take action because there's such a critical voice in your head that's constantly just like, well, you and this and I... And you said you were going to do this and you didn't. And you said you were going to feel this type of way and you didn't. And I said that I felt this type of way and you didn't care. And rah, rah, rah. and it's like, you're like your own nagging wife. <laughs> like you've got this internal feminine energy that's really critical. And that shit's being uprooted, you know, until now. It's critical until now. It's been holding you back until now. It's been toxic until now. And this is happening in tandem. Because as your inner masculine, just, it just, it just, just do what's in your heart to do. Just, to, just in taking the action itself, do it afraid, do it even with that critical voice. Just tell the critical voice like, yeah, okay, you want to criticize? Go ahead. Keep talking while I do this thing. And those energies just move and flow. And then you realize, oh, okay, that critical voice was actually working on your behalf to keep you from that pain. And then as you do things that you were afraid to do, you realize, okay, that pain actually isn't gonna manifest the way that it did before. And so I can forgive that critical voice and thank it for protecting me from so much and thank it for coming into my life on my behalf and thank it for doing its very best to protect me, love me, guide me but it's not a guide that you need anymore. And so you get to decide, you work with that energy and decide whether that wants to stay, adapt, change, leave, how it wants to leave, how it wants to flow out of your life. But it's ready to flow, it's ready to move, it's ready to adapt because you've got a really good fucking idea and you've got some really beautiful creativity and you've got some really creative and amazing ways for how to manifest some fucking money for your fucking self and God damn it, I can't wait to see what that's going to be. And I really hope that you go for it. That work, that action is going to pay off. It's all, it's, it's all up here for you. It's all up here for you. It's all up here for you. What are you willing to do? To what extent are you willing to go to show you that you believe in you? Hopefully all the way. All right. That is it for my first deck. I hope that this was helpful. I love you all beyond a reason. And... I hope you believe in yourself. I hope you go for whatever the fuck you want to go for. Your inner healing is happening. Your inner critic is being silenced. You are starting to believe in yourself in ways that you haven't before. You're starting to take chances on yourself like you haven't before. And if you really go for it, I, you know, in whatever way, shape, and form, and in whatever perfect timing you decide to do so, 
I don't think you're gonna regret that. <laughs> I don't think that you will regret that. Um, yeah. All right, cool. You guys know what to do. Subscribe if you want, like if you want, hit the alerts if you want, don't if you don't want. <laughs> I'm gonna be posting videos, I'm gonna be glowing, I'm gonna be doing shit either way. And if you wanna join the party, then continue to do so. Thank you so much, I'm Tia the Astro Poet. Hope you have a great day. Mwah. And on to the next, uh, on to the next one, on to the next, uh, on to the next one, on to the next, uh, on to the next one. Uh, This is LaCroix mixed with pomegranate juice. Mm, 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 mm. For anyone wondering what I'm drinking. Okay, which one did I say was number two? This one. Yeah. Okay. My number two deck. What's up, number two? Two, two, two. That's funny. I'm sorry I missed it. Two, one. One, two. Two. In the two one two, wait two one two. Do, 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 do. Spent six years in the two one two. I miss it. Um. All right. Y'all trifling number two. What the fuck should y'all on? What are y'all doing? I'm feeling whatever y'all doing is the same shit. Same shit, different day. <laughs> same shit, different day. I can't with you all. I can't with you all. What are you doing? <laughs> I almost don't even want to do a reading for you because I'm like, God damn it. You know. Whatever you're here for, you know. You know. I mean, we always know. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know already. But y'all on here trying to get a reading like, oh, what should I do? I'm not sure. I don't get it. I don't know. You can't fool me. You can't fool me. I don't read cards. I even <laughs> read your energy. You know. But I'm going to do this anyway. I'm going to do this anyway. Because you're here. I'm here with you. If you didn't get too pissed off at me already and turn this off. We're going to keep going. We're going to do this. We're going to see what this energy is. What is it you're doing that you know you aren't supposed to be doing? What is it y'all doing? What's this pattern that keeps repeating itself? Why do you keep choosing door number two when you know door number two don't like you and you don't like it? It don't like you and you don't like it. Hmm. What is that? Okay, that's a frog. I thought there, there was like a fly on this card, but it's not a fly, it's a frog. <laughs> Gotta be careful, it's in my face, you know what I'm saying. Okay, I had a couple more cards for you before I start, y'all. Trip you don't want to let go of. You don't want to let go of somebody in your life that you know is on some fuck shit. There's some sort of toxic energy y'all are hanging on for dear life, too. Reason are we here? We are. Yup, 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 yup. It's a critical voice. It's a critical voice. It's a critical voice. It's a critical voice that Okay. I get the sense if you picked this pile, you are either in or are considering um 
getting into a relationship or reconnecting with a friend. This doesn't have to be romantic. Um, but like rekindling something with someone who you know only brings destruction. Who you know is going to give you nightmares. Who you know is going to break your heart. And the reason that you're doing this is because you, for some monkey-ass reason, um, don't believe in yourself to, well, let me rephrase that. You don't believe in your spirit's ability to manifest anything better. You're just like, oh, well, I'm not going to get any better. This is low-key what I deserve. And guess what? If you believe that's what you deserve... <laughs> That's all what you're gonna get. Um, but yo, look, I mean, if you opt into this, good, more power to you, great. You're just gonna manifest another catastrophic situation in which you've gotta pick up the pieces, but you'll learn something. I ain't trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you what I feel. But this is not gonna help you avoid heartbreak. This is going to incite it. And I get the sense maybe this is sort of pandemic-y in nature. Like, you're just like, oh, shit. Like, I don't want to go through this summer by myself. I've already been alone. Been spending so much time alone. Been at home. Not doing the shit you used to do. Not going to places you used to go. Not excited by what used to excite you. So you're like, well, maybe I'll just hit up that person again. Maybe I'll just go back to that thing. Maybe, you know, I'm just going to head back into my past. That's just where my compass is leading me. No, it's not. <laughs> and you know it's not. And you know this is it. You know. Like, you know. And, come on. You know that. You know that you've learned this lesson. You don't have to loop through this again. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. But yeah, I'm, I'm sensing like a lot of loneliness here. You know. I wish I could just give you all a hug. That's what I wish. I wish that I could hug you. Let me see. We're going to get another card. What energy do you need to focus on? to get your beautiful ass out of this sadness or what kind of energy is coming into your life in an external person place or thing that will help you Heartbreak, go through a new one. <laughs> if you're gonna have an ex, <laughs> pick a new one. <laughs> oh, God. All right. <laughs> Lunar eclipse change. Like, I get the sense that you're not wanting to. It's like you're going to your south node, which you know, which you're comfortable with. You're like, okay, maybe this will be dramatic, but at least I know what to expect. Maybe this will hurt, but at least I know what to expect. Maybe this is going to suck, but at least I know what to expect. You know, maybe this will break my heart, but in a way that I know. And it's like, you know, <laughs> this is like, it's like your body's favorite place to be 
to just know what the fuck's going on and it's your spirit's least favorite your spirit wants new shit and change and growth and adaptation and I know that it hurts and it's so scary to be in that vulnerable place but what are you gonna do not take a chance what are you gonna do experience the same shit all over again same shit different day how's this working out for you you know what I'm saying like how's this working out for you how's this feeling how are you liking this Like, really, how are you liking this, you know? Um, I get the sense there's just so much turmoil here, and there's some sort of bright shininess that you're, like, going after, and, like, you feel that maybe maybe you're seeing signs, quote-unquote, like, I'm sensing that it's, like, you're, like, oh, well, this sign and this sign, and I was thinking about them, and then they, they reached out, and then I was thinking about this kind of object, and they gave it to me, and I was doing this and then that, and it's, like, you're following these signs, but it's, like, what do you think only benevolent spirits put up signs on the road? <laughs> Don't follow the signs. Don't follow the lights. That ship is not your compass. Your compass is deeper than that. You know, it's deeper than that. It's wider than that. It's higher than that. It's, it's you, you know, you're gonna keep running into walls if you follow the signs because... You're not the only one putting out signs. Spirit's not the only one putting out signs. There's a lot of spirits out here throwing up signs that isn't shit you want to be following. And so if you follow these signs, no wonder you keep hitting these dead ends, you know? I'm going to pull in this bottom card here because I'm flinging this card around, the first house card as well. Yeah, it's like... The way you see you you see yourself as deserving of this trouble. You see yourself as deserving of this difficulty. And the only reason that that's true is because you're believing it, you know? Um, you know, I, I know and I feel you, like, in this space of just, it's like, When we actually get to a space where we're ready for a different kind of love, when we actually get to the space where we're ready for a deeper and realer and truer connection, then there's this tinge of, there, I don't want to say tinge, there's like a wave, a tsun, fucking tsunami. It's huge. The, the way that our, our body, our ego, you know, the, the temporary part of us that just wants to be safe and comfortable and nuzzled and nestled into our south node, like, that part of us shouts so loudly all the things that could go wrong. And the thing is, all of those things could go wrong, but would it not be worth it to try? You know, like, would you give up any of your other pains? Would you give up any of your other circumstances and situations? If you would, I bet you you don't see them clearly. If you would give them up, I bet you you haven't learned what you were meant to learn. If you would give them up, I bet you aren't listening to your spirit. I bet you're listening to fucking signs. I bet you're listening to your south node. Which, And if you aren't familiar with north and south nodes, north node is like this uncomfortable energy that you're moving into. South node is sort of like where you've already been, your comfortable space that you're moving out of. Um... And maybe this new space for some of you is to just be alone. Maybe this new space for some of you is no connection, no new connection. <laughs> you know, I'm not swaying you in for an, uh, one way or the other. I'm just giving options. So it's like only you know. It's like whatever that un uncomfortable thing is that you most don't want to do, I bet that's the thing to do right now. <laughs> um... Because it's time for some change. Your spirit is like ready to change. Your spirit's ready to grow. And this is a reward. Like, you're, like change is a reward. Like, change is a privilege. Change is a trophy. You know, this, the readiness that you have for this is a result of a lot of healing that you've done. The readiness that you have for this is a result of 
good decisions that you've made to get out of these negative painful energies that you've been in and then you know you're tempted to just like jump into that old nasty pool that you fought so hard to climb out of go swim in some other waters yeah maybe you eventually will have to climb out of those waters too after a while you know if there's no living water flowing through them and it gets murky and dead and it becomes a dead sea and you gotta hop out what the fuck ever but it's like what are you going to do? Not dive anymore? What are you going to do? Not jump in anymore? Not connect? Not feel? Not relate? Again, how is that working out for you? So, only you know, only you can decide, you know? There's no right or wrong here. If you choose to go back, you're going to be back there and you're going to learn something else, you know? Don't you want to learn something new? Don't you want to learn something in a new space? You know? You know, what's the use several years from now going to say? Are you going to be glad that you took that chance? Are you going to regret taking the chance? Like, I'm seeing that really corny scene in, uh, why don't I say corny? No disrespect. Um, in fucking Transformers, where, you know, Bumblebee transforms into a car and is in front of Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, and he's like, aren't you going to want to say 20 years from now that you got in the car? Or 10 years from now, or whatever he says. You know? It's like, aren't you going to want to say, like... I was the brave one. I was the one to try. I did it. I tried. I jumped. I dove. You know, if you're here, you probably are that kind of a person. So jump, dive, go, get in the car, get in the new car. <laughs> you already know what that same old car is going to do. It's going to break down real fast. <laughs> I mean, real fast. <laughs> this shit don't work. The lug nuts on the tires are loose. Needs a new transmission. Power steering's about to be blown out. Fluids leaking everywhere. And you're like, but I know. But but this but this seat cushion is perfectly shaped to my buttocks. <laughs> yeah, get in a new, different, better for you car, and shape that car seat into your buttocks. God damn it. <laughs> I'm with you all. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna wrap this up by reiterating, you know. And I love you. <laughs> and I'm gonna keep it 100. That was my deck. Or that was my pile. That was for me too. I speak from judgment. Or speak from experience, not judgment speak from experience not judgment all right pile two i love you all beyond reason maybe we're all judging ourselves as what we're doing because that's my my shit too you know we all do this i'm not perfect i'm here learning with you all so pile two listen if you've been judging yourself as I have, we're all gonna decide together. <laughs> we're all gonna decide together, okay? To be a little kinder to ourselves, to not second guess ourselves so much and backtrack and apologize and question all day long if that was the right or the nice thing to say and just let our energy speak for itself, okay? We're gonna trust ourselves. We're gonna move forward. We're gonna do the shit that's in our heart to do. If you're going to take any risks, take a risk in the name of love. If you're going to take any chance, take a chance for connection. If you're going to go out on a limb, go out on a limb for a new relationship. Whether this be a person, place, or thing. I'm not saying this has to be romantic, but for a lot of you it is. Or at least for a lot of you, that's the thing you need to not veer into. Is an old romantic relationship. You know, this isn't for anyone currently in one. 
like y'all are going back. Thinking about going back. Thinking about hitting him up. Let me know how that works. I don't think it's going to be pretty. All right, pile two. I'm with you. You're with me. We got this. We're going to believe in ourselves. We're casting off judgment. We got this. I trust you with you. I love y'all from the bottom of my heart for real. I love you beyond reason. If you want to subscribe, go for it. If you want to hit the like button, go for it. If you want to turn the little bell on for notifications, you can do that too. Comment, what the fuck ever. If you don't want to do any of those things, I still love you beyond reason. <laughs> You can get all my info and the little info, whatever. Shit below the video, you know. You know! You know! If you don't know by now, how do you even get on YouTube? <laughs> you know. Alright, I gotta itch, I gotta make sure it's not gonna mess up my face. Alright. How cool is this paint, by the way? I love glow in the dark shit. Mm. It gets even glowier when I'm further back, which I love. But then you can't really see me. Hang on, maybe I'll switch back to this one. Mm, 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 mm. I love it so much. Um, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit, not a lot. Hell yeah. I wish I would have done this for all of them. Oh well. <sighs> pile three. Huh? What's up, pile three? I hope you all are well. We're going in, okay? Going in. Some deep shit. I got you. We got this. Bone collector is your card. There we go. A little fuzzy. A little fuzzy. My ring light's creating a glare. Apologies. Bone collector. All right. What deck do we need some cards from? What deck are we gonna pull from? Ooh, this is a fairy deck. Man, I don't use this one very often. This is your shiny ink. Alright, a little fairy oracle deck. What do the fairies have to say? What do the fairies have to say? To my beautiful pile three. What do the fairies have to say? Ooh, yeah. This is the fairy oracle deck. I love it. Probably our most underused deck, but whenever I do use it, it hits hard. It hits hard. Okay. So what we're doing here, or if you picked this deck, I guess. Let me rephrase that. What I'm doing here is reading tarot cards. <laughs> and if you picked this deck... get the sense that you're feeling how do I want to put this well, let me just talk about the energy of the bone collector card so bone collector card is like you later on in life it's like you as like a wise old crone sort of archetype if you're not familiar with the crone archetype it's just like Sort of like the old lady who doesn't give two fucks anymore and is just like the wise town or village elder. You know, it's like your super wise, insightful grandma who has all the best recipes and all the best home remedies and, you know, always has a place for you to sit and, you know, is welcoming and healing and kind. That sort of. And also just sharp, snippy, snappy, badass. You know, take no shits kind of wise and takes no shits and this is the you that has been keeping very very safely all of the jewels and gems that you thought were stolen so what we're doing here is we're dealing with sort of old residual traumas from childhood this is kind of yeah similar to the first first reading but we're, it's a different direction um you know because nothing eternal can ever be taken nothing 
that shapeless formulas could ever use its shape or form. Nothing of true value can ever be stolen. So anything that was stolen isn't anything you need to worry about. And what was perceived to be stolen, these jewels, gems, these treasures, your innocence, your purity, your kindness, your softness, your grace, your eloquence, your elegance. And, you know, if you're a more masculine energy, your vigor, your weapons, your valor, your honor, your dignity, that already says strength, your strength. It's like you're, it's like... The people who chose this deck almost, you've perceived yourself as like a deflated balloon, almost. You know? So you've seen yourself as this deflated balloon. You've seen yourself as having lost time. And you've, you've looked at your past and thought to yourself, this is just a pile of corpses. This is a pile of dead bones. This is, you know, there are parts of me that I've just buried that are dead and gone. And you've thought, I'll just never be able to reconnect to this part of myself. You know, I'll never find joy in this part of my life. You know, it's like all the lights have gone off. All the joy seems to be taken from those experiences in that timeline, in that particular time in life. For some of you, this goes all the way back to like when you were two years old specifically, I'm hearing for some of you. Like these first pangs of just, I don't get to be myself. These first pangs of what brings me joy gets me in trouble. These first pangs of being made to feel like you're stupid. These first pangs of feeling like you're a bother or an inconvenience or a drag, like dead weight. We're going to like where that was sort of like implanted. And what the Bone Collector card represents is this older version of you that's literally overflowing with joy like I feel like there's this just huge vat of just overflowing overflowing pouring overflowing you know this joy that's just it's from your inner well that you thought for so long maybe you were never going to be able to fully connect with. You thought for so long, maybe I'll never really have that in abundance anymore. Maybe I'll always have to do all these external things to get it back, to get to this space, you know? It's like you've got, I've got to, you know, meditate at this time of day and eat this specific kind of diet and do this specific kind of exercise. Da -da 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 -da. Like, I feel like you guys are really overachievers. You're like really doers. You're like probably pretty successful in some way, shape, or form, whether that be financially or relationally. Maybe you have a lot of connections you're really proud of. Um, you know, you've got a lot going for you from this place of, like, hyper-productivity as that's where you're finding a lot of your value. You know, even as creators, sometimes we create from this space. Um, 
you know, even, even as healers, sometimes we're creating content and, and trying to help people out of the space of feeling that, you know, we're inadequate and insufficient without doing so. Um, and what the bone collector does is all along the way, all of those things that you thought you lost, all of that innocence, all of that joy, all that strength, that valor, that dignity, all that beauty and that elegance and that grace, all of that has been held and protected for you, by you, on your behalf. And so what's happening is you're going through this heart healing. I've got the little heart chakras uh, or the stone that associates with the heart chakra that I'm going to pull out because I'm feeling drawn to it right now. You're going through this um, heart chakra healing. You're opening yourself up to those things coming back into your life because what happened is that previously even facing the reality of how distant you felt from that joy was too much to even look at. So now you're able to say, okay, I've been without this for so long and I'm willing to finally admit that. And then you can go through the process of finding it again. Not getting it, not receiving it. It is yours and always has been. It's never left you. And you're just remembering and realizing what's always been there. And you're going to find in spaces of your life that same joy, those same qualities that you thought weren't there. It's like your story is going to like be cracked open in all these spaces and in these timelines. And you're going to see these like protective forces. You're going to see this joy. You're going to see this um, energy from people. It's like there was a lot of external influences that you didn't even realize were working on your behalf. Which is to say, look, people, places, and things that really protected you and loved you and held you. And because you couldn't even go into those memories, you couldn't see that. But now that it's opened up, you're going to go back and you're going to see things from a new perspective. You're going to see things from a different perspective. You're going to see things more clearly. Because the wa it's like your waters have been um, um, murky. You know? And there's been a recent cleanse. There's been a recent you know, bout of clarity. And what's happened is that you've just simply changed your perspective because where you were at before, the fairy card that I got was, um, you know, sort of this indication where there's these little fairies like on this journey and they're just looking down and they've got their lantern and they're trying to see like one step in front of them, one step in front of them, one step in front of them. And if they would lift their eyes and look up, they would recognize that there's trees next to them that are literally alive, like ants. And there's there's an owl in the tree that has complete perception over the bigger picture, over what's happening, you know, uh, <laughs> further down this path. And they're not open to what nature has to say. Maybe for a lot of you, this does have to do with actually getting out into nature. Um, for a lot of you, this just has to do with connecting to what used to make you happy as a child and younger. Like literally, like if you, if you used to like to paint to do that, if you used to like to sing to grab your hairbrush and sing, like if you used to want to be a gymnast to like stretching out and moving the way that a gymnast would, if you used to want to be a basketball player, you know, go to a garage sale and get a fucking basketball or grab the one in your garage and pump it up and use it. Um, it's like these, these things that you, you thought were old and dead and gone, these joys that you thought you would never be able to experience anymore are having a complete like internal revival. And while this is a really sad sort of reckoning with, okay, I've been without this, you're also, I'm like, ugh. I'm about to cry. It's fine if I cry. Um, you know, you're also about to open up into one of the most like abundant seasons of joy you've ever had in your lived experience because you're finally ready to face these things. You're finally ready to shed all these preconceived notions to stop just being in emergency and survival mode. Lift your eyes. See clear. See from a high, more broad perspective. And realize that it's like, you know, all in your past, we've got this, you know, we've got this eight of wands, which in, in my, this deck, you know, is a butterfly with all these swords all around it. And it's like, yeah, there was a lot of trial and tribulation. Like some of you really went through some shit, like, excuse me, I mean some shit. So please don't hear me, um, disrespecting that. 
please don't hear me making light of that in any way, shape, or form. But what I am saying is the most innocent, perfect, precious, eternal parts of you have always been protected. You've never been anything but protected, loved, held, seen, understood. In every way, shape, and form. By some way, shape, and form. <laughs> and because now your waters are clear, you're going to be able to open up and see that. You know, it was always you all along. You're still here. You're here now with me right now. Who got you here? Who got you through all of that? Was that not you? You did that. You did that. And so it's really time to give yourself some credit. It's really time to see yourself. All of the qualities that you felt that you lost, that beauty, that valor, that safety, that innocence, that you know, strength and vitality and all those qualities that I mentioned earlier, all those qualities that you thought that you lost have been yours all along and you've had them all along and those qualities are actually what got you through the bullshit you went through. Those qualities are actually what sustained you this whole time. Those qualities are actually how you're here and didn't just end. You did that. And you've got like where you're heading into so many possibilities because you gained so many skills in that survival mode. You're scrappy, you're resourceful, you're cunning, you're intelligent, you are sharp, you're emotionally intelligent, you're intuitive, you're probably very psychic. Um, you are a natural born healer. You are a natural born leader. Um, you have so many amazing qualities in you. And what's happening is that because you're opening your heart up to this healing, you are about to find, we've got the three of pentacles here as well. You are about to find people to partner with you to build something with this sense of loneliness that you felt is about to just be completely washed out not only by the love and the joy that you're going to experience internally but that's also then going to be mirrored externally and you're going to find soul group members soul mates twin flames friends um be very um wise and discerning moving forward not to be caught up too quickly in assuming that someone is a romantic connection because you might manifest a soul group relationship friendship before that romantic one so be very you know i mean listen do what the fuck you want to do jump and dive and you know i'm not saying to be afraid but i feel that warning i feel that you know because you've been without that connection for so long you might mistake um people who are coming into your lives to help with business ideas, people that are coming into your lives to help you just simply move through this next stage of life, sort of platonic friends, different kinds of soulmates, you know, I'll use that term in air quotes. Um, you know, that aren't necessarily those going to be that lover. It's just, 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 you know. <laughs> Just pay attention. Just pay attention. That's all I'm saying. Just pay attention. In whatever way that looks for you. But you're heading into so much joy. You're heading into so much. I want to say like externalized realization of an internal abundance that you felt was taken from you that never was it's always been yours and what's happening is that's unleashing it's unlocking you're going to find yourself in the past and in the future you're going to find yourself as your greatest protector you're going to find yourself as your greatest cheerleader as the person who's been there oh, like you've held you this whole time and you will continue to do so. You always have, always have, and you always will. And this process you're going through right now is so beautiful and so perfect. 
And all it really takes is a change in perspective to trust yourself and love yourself and to know that you really have what it takes to go back into those memories and into that space. Admit what really went on there. Process those emotions. Feel them. Let them move and flow through your body. Maybe if you can get some help to do that, maybe this, you know, Three of Pentacles is also indicating some help, you know, in your healing and spiritual journey. Maybe you're going to find someone to help you through meditation techniques. Maybe you need to look up some meditation techniques. Maybe you're going to reach out to a counselor or a healer that you've, you've been feeling drawn to already. And you're maybe going to reach out to them and actually get the ball rolling to get some therapy sessions or integration sessions or um, healing sessions, whatever that looks like, you know, whatever that looks like for you. I, I get the sense that you sort of already have some idea of what that will look like and, and who or what kind of healing modality you're most interested in. Maybe it could just be breath work. For some of you, maybe it's just yoga. Um, for some of you, maybe you're just going to like take a trip and clear your head and like reset. Um, for some of you, maybe you're just going to manifest some friends who have sort of more experience with these modalities and in these processes, and they're going to help you navigate this season. But I'm, I just, I don't, I don't want to sound like super gory, but I feel the thing to say is like, I want you to know that like, like someone's proud of you. Like I'm proud of you. And I hope that you're proud of you. I hope that you're proud of you. Like, I hope that you recognize yourself as your own savior. I hope that you recognize yourself as your own hero. I hope that you recognize yourself as your own greatest source of wisdom and strength. Because you are. You've held yourself and protected yourself this whole time. And your heart is healed and healing and a healer. And you have nothing but possibilities. You have nothing but options. Nothing but possibilities and nothing but options. You can have what you want. Everybody, it's, you know, I get this since you're really good at supporting other people's dreams, you know, and it's time now to use all of that energy that you usually give off on yourself. Believe in your own dreams. Believe in what you want. Find joy in your own journey. Find joy in your own desires. And then see them manifest externally. I'm so excited for you guys. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to say this is going to be cute. I'm not going to say this is going to be easy. But holy shit, you guys are in such a beautiful place. It's going to be so worth it. For real. And listen, the hardest part's over. You already lived through it. All right. <sighs> Beautiful pile three. I love you all beyond reason. Again, I'm Tia the Astro Poet. Um, if this helped you in any way, shape, or form, I would love to hear from you. You can let me know in the comments or on Instagram if you feel like it. You can like this if you feel like it. You can subscribe if you feel like it. You can hit the little uh, notification button so that you get notifications when I post if you want to do that. And if you don't want to do that, then I still love you beyond reason and you can still keep showing up whenever you feel like it. Okay? Um, well, thank you so much uh, for watching this. If you did, thank you so much for allowing me to join you in your space. Thank you for letting me read your energy like this. It is truly what I love doing most. I hope that it's helpful. I hope you feel loved and seen and heard and understood. And I hope that you feel like you now have some more tools in your tool belt to manifest your um, ideal lived experience in your heaven on earth. I love you all beyond reason.